hello Stampin' Up World, hello Facebook World, am I live? Is anybody there? Yes! Hi Sylvia! I think I've got a couple of people watching. Hi Carol! How are you? And I'll just hang on until another couple of people jump on and I'll say good evening. Oh, so how is everyone this evening? I'm having a drink. I haven't had pizza, but I've had afternoon tea. Mm. So, hi mum. <laughs> so it's good to see you all joining me this evening. I've got quite a lot to get through this evening. Um, I am going to demonstrate the Give It A World Eyes and I'm going to explain about where they are in the catalogue um how they work demonstrate how to use them i'm going to show you a couple of cards well i'm going to show you another card that i've already made and i'm going to obviously demonstrate the card that i've put up on the little mini video earlier i think it was yesterday so i've got quite a lot to dem well quite a lot to demonstrate but i've also got quite a lot of kind of special offers and things to talk about so let's um make a start and i'll start as always by saying it's great that you've joined me here on my facebook live and if you're joining me later on my youtube channel thank you also for joining me there which i will um publish to youtube later in the week and um you're joining me izzy shashinsky of izzy's crafty bees i'm an independent stamping up demonstrator here in the uk and in uh, north nottinghamshire to be precise Redford in North Nottinghamshire. So thank you very much for joining me. I can see Lorna's joined me as well. So I'm just waving to everyone. Hi. <laughs> Hi everyone. <laughs> it's lovely. Um, so yeah, I'll start as always by just saying three things that have made me happy. Only three. It was hard to choose three of my top things this week because I've had such a nice week since last week. Um, I had afternoon tea as you may have seen on my regular facebook feed this afternoon with my lovely friend and colleague linda that was fantastic and that was a one of those discount vouchers that just popped into my inbox at random and i usually just delete them all because you get so many but retford jumped off the page and i thought oh what's that so um just grabbed uh, one of those discount vouchers and it was ever so good really enjoyed it so who wouldn't say no to tea and cake good it was lovely and um, we had a fab games night last thursday lorna was with me and Ginny and beth uh we meet every so often not necessarily every month but every few weeks and we play board games so that was that was great actually we had a lovely evening more cake involved a huge slab of cheesecake jam it dodger cheesecake oh my word <laughs> I'm going to have to seriously diet. <laughs> I mean, it was lovely. It was a really fun evening. And then the third thing that made me happy, um, well, I'll sneak a fourth one in. I did a lot of gardening at the weekend. That always makes me happy. But yes, the thing that made me really happy today was a good long chat on video call with my bestie, Alison. So that was really good. It's always great to catch up with Ali. Um, so... Um, that's the things that made me happy. I want to know what's made you happy since we last chatted here on Facebook Live. So please feel free to comment throughout the evening, not necessarily just now, but yeah, have a think about it as we're crafting. Um, so I have got quite a lot to get through in terms of special offers. I want to say um, that it's the last couple of weeks of celebration so I will show you the brochure again and remind you that we have until the end of September to grab freebies from celebration we've just got a new paper pumpkin and I had hoped mine would be here for today but it isn't it's going to be delivered tomorrow hopefully fingers crossed and that paper pumpkin coordinates with the artistically inked and I know this is backwards but anyway the artistically inked stamp set and uh, beautiful dies and beautiful designer series paper so I'm really excited to get that because that's been a favorite thing of mine I haven't demonstrated it too much 
because we did have a massive sellout um, of the designer series paper, but that's back in stock because it's been so popular. And, um, oh, Carol's been to Betty's for lunch. I love Betty's. Did you have a fat rascal or bring one home, Carol? You've got to bring at least a fat rascal home if you didn't eat one. I absolutely love it there. It's such a special occasion going to Betty's. So, yeah, that sounds fab. Yes, yeah, so that paper pumpkin went live. It's £20 and it just looks beautiful. I can't wait to share it with you. So if you want to place an order for one of those paper pumpkins, just let me know or you can order direct online. We also had the release of the Christmas Whimsy kit, which makes Christmas cards. And I'll just flick to the page that there's a little bit of a picture of that in the catalogue. But just a reminder that all kits are actually... Um, online now they're not printed they don't go into a printed publication like a catalogue so you need to keep your um, eye on the website go to my shop online to keep up to speed with what kits are available but that looks a cute little kit and that's 18 pounds um, I'm going to offer you so just to whet your appetite if you love what I'm making this evening and you feel like you want to treat yourself before the end of celebration, I'm going to also chuck in some extra freebies. So if you love the um, take a whirl, give it a whirl, give it a whirl die set that I'm using to make the interactive card and you love the um, stamp set and dies, which I've forgotten what they're called, I don't know why, all dressed up dies and the dressed to impress stamp set and you want to buy all three items the dress to impress stamp set and dies are no longer available as a bundle because they've been around this is the second catalogue they've been in but if you love all three items and you want to order all of them after this demonstration this evening that comes to 86 pounds now you won't qualify for a £90 celebration, but you will qualify for a £45 celebration. But I will add in something extra so you can pick two celebration items or maybe one of the £90 celebrations. And I'll also throw in a pack of designer series paper of your choice. So that's just a special offer from me tonight, um, if you really like, because I realised that the um, Dress to Impress stamp set and, and dies were no longer available as a bundle. And I thought, well, 86 quid is very near that £90 mark for that double celebration offer. So I'll, I'll top that up to £90 and you can choose either two of those £45 celebration items or one of the £90 and that delightful dahlias stamp set that's everywhere on social media at the moment, that's one of the £90 worth. And if you haven't seen that in action, please go to Lorna's um, Facebook page and watch her live from a couple of weeks ago because that stamp set is gorgeous. I didn't get it because I knew I wouldn't have time to demonstrate it. And now I'm kind of wishing that I'd got it anyway because it's for free um, and I could just have kept it in my stash because it really is beautiful. So there's quite a few bits. So I'm going to spin my camera around and then I can actually show you some of this stuff. So let me just pop my glasses on and then I can see what I'm doing. Oh, extreme close up. Here we go. Let me spin you. So I'm going to stand up just for a short while. Let me just get this wibbly wobbly camera. Are we nice and straight? I think we're nice and straight there. Okay, so... As always, my new host code, that's actually on Facebook and it's pinned to the top. So my host code that's current at the moment is this one and you can order from izzyscraftybees.stampingup.net. All orders over £25 do get a freebie from me in any case. So you, it's a real good time at the minute to get some freebies. You'd get a freebie from me if your order's over 25 If it goes over 45 you can pick a celebration item. And we've got, just a reminder, we've got that bee dazzling, that beautiful bee dazzling paper. I've shown it a few times. Let me just grab it because it's here. It's this gorgeous, super pack. I've used it so much. I'm nearly out of my pack. And you get um, ooh, eight pieces of six inch by six inch in the pack there. You can get that for free at £45. Just look at the circles in your brochure. You get the penguins. 
design a series paper if you spend 45 there's this this lovely stamp set again i've got this i've not even inked it yet this is beautiful feels like home i really love this image and i'm going to be doing some watercolors with this and i want to in particular make a happy new home card for somebody using this i think it's perfect um you get this for 45 pounds spend for free you get this christmas paper and who doesn't need christmas paper I mean, we all need Christmas paper. If it's for free, let's grab it while it's here. And what's next? Oh, yes, the sheep. So I've I've got the sheep. I think I've demonstrated the sheep once, maybe. And the matching dies. So they're a £45 spend. So rather than putting them together and expecting you to spend 90 it's a £45 spend for either or. You can just get the sheep and cut them out. This is a really useful stamp set that I've seen a lot of demonstrators demonstrating textures and frames. Ever so useful for those backgrounds. Look how clever it is. It makes those backgrounds really easy. And that's a £45 spend. Now this one, if you have got the, um, the stamp set Shaded Summer from the annual catalogue, it's a £21 stamp set. You can get these matching dies if you spend £90. Oh, am I in shot? Am I out of shot? You can get some matching dies, and these are fantastic um, if you've got this stamp set. It's not a stamp set I've got. Um, and then here we go. Here's the dahlias. Delicate dahlias. This is a beautiful two-step um, stamp set, and it's one of the... Um, ones that oh, i've forgotten what it's called you know i'm lorna last night you were saying oh i can't find my words it's that menopause isn't it my words have gone completely anyway it's a two-step stamp set it's beautiful i have seen so many demonstrations using this and i'm just i really wish i'd got it now i mean i still might get it but anyway there you go um there's still the joining um brilliant joining offer where you can get a free bundle and there's the list of the bundles in the back but i also want to point out um this host set so i've got this one here which i don't intend to ink i intend to gift this to somebody at some point and you get this for free if your order totals um 275 pounds so it's, it doesn't have to be a, a completely single order. It could be that you decide to host. And what do I mean by host? Well, you might decide to gather a few friends together and put together an order or a few friends round for coffee and stamping. And you might pull together an order for £275 or more and you would qualify to get this stamp set for free. Very useful. Lots of really useful sentiments in this set really like it i mean there's the happy birthday that we all need um i really like this one your birthday came your birthday went here's the card i should have sent oh my goodness how many cards do i make and how many times do i almost forget to post them on time so that's oh i'm dropping things i'm here still i'm just on the floor so that's celebration it's a quick reminder i will get i will get on with crafting i really do want to remind you that it's the last couple of weeks of celebration so we really need to make sure i need to make sure that you're getting all the stuff that you need and the freebies i just want to remind you that i also do a paper share anytime this is not just a one-time special offer if you don't want one full pack of um brights or neutrals or subtles or regals or you don't want one full pack of one solid colour, but you want to mix and match because you've got some favourites, then please let me know because I can offer you a pick and mix. So that's 20 sheets of any cardstock, any colour. You could have 20 different colours. Half and half, so 10 of one, 10 of another, or four favourites. And you get five sheets of each. And that's always £8.25. And so just let me know if you ever want a, pa a paper share, a cardstock share. Um, and I can sort that for you anytime and there'll just be if you're not local to me there'll just be a little bit of postage on top but I can tell you what that will be because I just pop it in 
um, a rigid envelope and send it to you in the post. So you can be anyway. You can't get this from my shop. You need to contact me direct if you want to do a paper share. Similarly, and I haven't got any leaflets printed just at the moment because I think I gave them all out. If you want to do a ribbon share, just let me know. So if you don't want, if you want a little bit of ribbon, you want a couple of metres, say for example, of each of the in colours, then just let me know and I can always organise a ribbon share for you. So that's just something to bear in mind. Anyway, let's crack on. Let's just move all these bits and bobs out of the way. And I'm going to just show you now what we're doing this evening. So I'm going to show you how I made this interactive card with the Give It A Whirl dies and the Dress To Impress stamp set and matching dies. And I also didn't advertise this, but I'm also going to show you how I made this cute little handbag gift bag using the Dress to Impress dies that match with the stamp set. So I just wanted to make sure because I've never demonstrated this live. I've done a class with this, an in-person class, but I've not demonstrated it live. So I wanted to make sure that you're aware of the um, extent to what you can make with the dies. So that's what we're going to make this evening. I also just want to share this card. The first card I made using the Give It A Whirl dies was this one and I completely cased it with the only difference was I used this fabulous free celebration glittery paper but I completely cased this from a wonderful demonstrator from Tasmania she probably couldn't get as far away as any further away from me than that and she's called Kayla McCready and she had a lovely online um, video showing how she used it and it's pretty much the same as she did except I don't think she had I think she might have had gold stars and I just really loved this I love the sentiment always reach for the stars and that was using the to the moon stamp set and that's from the annual catalogue I've used this quite a bit now personal cards I've not demonstrated it I don't think so I just wanted to show you, same but different. I used exactly the same layout in terms of layers, but I made mine differently. And I'm going to show you how I went from the wedge shape window to the circular window using the um, Give It A Whirl dies. So let's just have a quick look at the annual catalog and I'm going to show you where they are in the catalog. So you go to the dies section in the back and I just want to point out that they are a standalone set of dies. They're on page 163. The item number is 154336 and they're £36 for the set. And there are 21 dies in total and I'm going to open the packet and show you them all. But these are one of the standalone dies. There's this one as well, Flower Market, which actually just die cuts a layer that you can use on your cards. And there are the layering dies, they're sort of standalone dies that don't coordinate or match or go with a bundle, for example. So there's the layering diorama, layering circle. Um, I think Basic Borders is another set that sort of stands on its own. It doesn't actually coordinate with any stamp sets. And then there's the Give It A World Eyes. Now they are shown on page 57 with just, they've made a card using the um, Stella Birthday set, which I think it shows it how to use it, but it doesn't show it in its entirety. And so I wanted to just make sure that you're aware of how it works. And the other dies we're going to use this evening is the all dressed up dies that coordinate with the stamp set. And the stamp set is um, this one here, the dress to impress stamp set, and that's on page 31 and that's 17 pounds. But I also wanted to just point out that if you do love the um, give it a whirl dies, you will need some brads. And we do have some round a set of round and square brads and they're £6.50 and they're on page 143 in the catalogue. So that's what we're going to use this evening. And with that, I'm going to just get out all my bits and bobs. So we're going to use the 
all dressed up dies give it a world dies dressed to impress stamp set and i've just stolen one sentiment from this stamp set that's the only reason i've got that one out so i'm not sort of highlighting that i've just stolen a, a sentiment and let me just see what else i need to get out i'm going to change up my card for a different colour combination. It's going to be exactly the same, but I'm going with a different colour combination and I'm going to go with Fresh Freesia for my base and Blackberry Bliss for my top layer. I'm also going to use some thick basic white and some shimmery white cardstock. So I'll talk you through why I've chosen to use all of those as I go. I'm going to use some Fresh Freesia ribbon to coordinate. So I'll just pop that out. And then the inks I'm going to use are just coordinating Fresh Freesia and Old Olive for my flower, a little bit of So Saffron for my perfume bottle and possibly um, some Fresh Freesia. And I'm maybe stamping with Basic Grey. I've got some stays on and some Versamark. And I'll make, just do a little bit of heat embossing for this sentiment here. So that's all my inks. I'll just pop those to one side. I'm also going to use this punch. I'm going to just supplement these dies with this punch. And I'm just going to get these little bits out so I can get rid of that big box that's on my desk. And I'm going to take a seat in a second. I don't think I've got any more comments just to look at. So I'm just going to take a seat. And I'm going to just grab my big notebook with some paper sizes. So let's have a look, before we use those, let's have a look at the actual dies, the Give It A Whirl dies. There's quite a lot in here, as I said, um, 21 dies in total. So I'm going to just talk you through them. So you get this die, which cuts, you need this to cut the top layer, which kind of goes across everything with this cut out. So you've got somewhere to... Um, spin the wheel. You get the wheel itself, a die to cut the wheel itself. And then what I wanted to, sh to really show you and highlight is that this window in which your images or your sentiments come round is cut by these four. So you get four different options and these are the ones with this little tag with the hole in. So you get a rectangular and they're all stitched they give you a stitched um, aperture that's a big word write it down somebody before I forget it they give you a stitched aperture and they've got this little lug and I'm just going to lay them out so we've got the wedge shape which I used on this one we've got the circle which I used on this one and we have this pretty scalloped stitched circle that we can decorate that with which I think is a bonus and we have a heart shape and I have also pre-cut and I just got them out and put them down and I don't know what I've done with them they'll pop up they will pop up somewhere where did I put them I got them out to show you because I pre cut a front with each one of these now that's just absolutely ridiculous and very annoying but I'm sure they'll pop up once I get going oh here they are it's because I put a stamp set on top so I've pre-cut a wheel just to show you but I've pre-cut a front using the heart and a front using the rectangle. Now I just also want to point out that these can be positioned anywhere at all and the way that that happens is when you die cut this piece these pieces can be positioned on top there's this little hole i'm going to stand up and see whether this this little hole here actually has a raised piece if i put my hand there it should focus and this die cut piece actually locates on top you see how that fit in and we turn the whole lot over and we run it through the die cutting machine like that so there's two ways of cutting it you can actually just cut this piece and then line up this die with the hole on the front and then run it through your machine again or you can run it through just the ones with the actual dies coupled together which I just think is so clever and that means that you can have your aperture anywhere you want so long as it's 
located on that lug. So you could have your aperture cutting out down below, over to the side. You can have it wherever you want. So I just think that that's really clever. And I wanted just to have that moment to show you how this die works because it's a very clever design. So that's that. Also in the die set is a useful label piece. We can always use that for a sentiment. You get these cute pieces that cut out shapes, stars, hearts. Look, you get three different sized hearts as well as the heart aperture piece. Um, so they're, they're the stars and you also get these cute clouds. So I've used the cloud pieces and the star pieces on this one. It's just too cute for words. So you get a lot of dies. You also get this piece that cuts out three tiny circles and you can use those to cover up the brads if you want. You get this little piece that cuts teeny tiny arrows which you can then adhere onto your card to show the recipient which way to turn. You get these pieces which actually do um, a similar job. So if you pop this piece in here and then you run that through your machine what you end up with on this piece on the base piece of your card is a pierced arrow so it's like a stitched and pierced arrow rather than something to stick on um, and you get two of those and then a square one as well so lots and lots of different dies and we're going to use this one this one this one and this one and all the rest can go back in the pack for the moment so that's cool we'll leave those out i think that's it i think i also use this one to cut out a tiny heart and i'm just going to pop those little ones on my magnetic block just so i don't lose them okay so that's the dies talked through and of course, any questions or comments, please pop them below and I will come through and answer them after I've finished recording this session. Um, so, what do we need? I've done some pre-cutting just to save a bit of time. I've pre-cut the bag, so I'm going to assemble and decorate the bag last. So I'm going to pop that there. And I've pre-cut some of the cardstock ready because you don't need to see me cut it we want to get on with the card so what i have pre-cut is my card base and i've cut it half a sheet of a4 lengthways and scored at half so that's ten and a half wide now just as a normal card um, size would be but i'm standing it tent style i've decorated inside i will be doing with this one so i'm going to stand it tent style and that's my card base. I've also pre-cut two pieces of Blackberry Bliss and I'm going to give you the dimensions of that just in case you do buy the dies and come back to this video as a reference point at a later date. So I've cut a layer um, for my base I think. Yes, I've cut a layer for my base and that is 14 centimetres by, oh no, it's not, it's 14.3 centimetres by 10.3 centimetres. So it's just a little bit smaller than my card base. Then I've cut another piece, which is a bit smaller, only a little bit, and because I'm going to die cut this with the big die. And basically it just needs to be big enough to accommodate the big die. And so I've cut it uh, 14 by 10 and a half and I'm going to die cut that piece. And I'm going to die cut it using um, the round aperture. And I've got a couple of pieces of shimmery white. I've got one that's big enough to cut the wheel. And I've got one that's big enough to actually stamp um, the decoration so the perfume bottle and the flowers and I'll have a bit extra here and I've also cut um, an extra wheel in just basic white because I'm going to double up these wheels just to make it a bit thicker and a bit more substantial so I've already pre-cut this one and now I've got two of these pieces of this shim beautiful shimmery gold and I've used the same 
in the same pack if you've not seen this this is in the annual catalogue and it's absolutely stunning it's gold and rose gold metallic speciality paper so it's gold and rose gold and it feels like vinyl it has no glitter to shed and it's just it has like a really fine scratched surface that really shimmers it's absolutely stunning and I've used the rose gold on this card and I'm going to use the gold gold on this card because I think it really goes well. So that's um, item number 156844 and that's only £4 something in the annual catalogue. And I will tell you what page it's on at some point, but not right now because I've just buried my catalogue. So that's what I'm using there. And I've cut myself a piece um that is 10.3 by 4.5 centimeters and that's to do my layer and i've cut another piece or i've got another piece that i'm going to just die cut this fancy circle so let's do some die cutting i'm going to bring my big machine actually right across let me just clear this desk a little bit now i'm going to actually bring my big machine in don't always bring it in because it's a bit big and it just you know you can't really see it all I just wanted to show you how I pop this on the machine so I'm going to use because I'm using the round aperture I'm going to attach that so I've actually locating that there so it's so um Fiddly to do when you're standing, it's much easier when you're sitting. I'm going to lay that onto my platform. I'm going to just make sure I'm adjusting it so it's in the right position. Just try and move that back a touch so you can see it. I'll move my camera a little bit, maybe, so you can see that. So I've laid that on my piece and I'm laying it just slightly on a diagonal. I'm just going to take my time to make sure that that's in the right position. So I've got that kind of central because you can see it will move but it is located on that little notch. Let's just take my time, get that central and pop my top plate on. I'm going to give it a good squeeze with my finger and thumb like this while I get it started just so that it doesn't jump. You can see my thumb is holding that top plate just until it gets started. go Let me just bring that out so what we get I'll just pop that die down and that circle die we get this waste which is going in the bin and let me just I'm not moving the machine away I'm just going to try and pop that so we now get this piece that's die cut. Now you do get this kind of impression here but because we're decorating the card we're not going to worry about that and we've got that fancy piece that goes over the top. So we've now got our top layer die cut and you can see it gives you that pretty stitched edge. I'm hoping you can see that. So that's, that's one piece done and we also get this circle because that's cut out of the middle and I'm going to save that and do my sentiment on that and the next piece I'm going to die cut is the wheel out of shimmery white. Now let me just see what else did I need. I needed my piece of shimmery speciality paper and while we're going through the machine I'm going to just pop on this fancy circle and I'm going to also pop the little tiny arrow right next to it because we might as well do one pass through the machine for all those bits. So here comes the fancy circle and arrow and here comes the wheel and here we go. So now I've got the wheel with a hole in the middle and what am I doing here? Oh there we are, I'm looking for my magnet. I've got my little tiny arrow and I've got my fancy circle. Now because this is a kind of, um, it's like a vinyl, you do have to press it to pop it out. You just have to 
we'll have that circle in the middle which we're also going to use as a little sort of embellished circle I've got those two components and this tiny little arrow which I'm sure I'm going to lose at some point I think what I'm going to do is actually magnetize that tiny arrow just onto my block onto my magnet with the die over the top so when I'm looking for it will somebody please shout at me that that's where it is and I'll just pop that piece to one side and I think for the minute we've done our die cutting for our main pieces of the card construction I'm going to actually do some stamping now and just pop those little bits to one side so we've got our pieces to construct the card, but what we do need is something to decorate the card. So we'll do the bit that we all love and that's the stamping. So now we can relax a bit. I've got a piece of shimmery white. Just pop that there. Got a little piece of shimmery white cardstock. And the reason I've chosen the shimmery white cardstock is because it really loves to be watercolored on. And I'm going to color in the perfume bottle and the flowers with a watercolor technique. So I'm going to use stays on. And I'm going to stamp my perfume bottle first. So I've got to really tap, tap, tap the stays on just to really get it juicy. And then I'm going to stamp a little bit pale in the middle. We've got emergency side. Whenever I use stays on, I have to really work out tap 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 gives it a capilla reaction so it makes the ink come to the surface if you don't tap it enough a nice bit of pressure that's better and then I'm going to stamp one each of the flowers that come in the set so they're a lovely it's a lovely stamp set I know I've used this quite a, a bit before I know I've used it in in-person classes and I think I've demoed it live on Facebook Certainly once, because I remember doing a long skinny card using the gilding flakes, using the perfume bottle, is one of my favourite sets. It's so feminine, you get that shoe, that high heeled shoe and the lipstick. I love these roses. I use them a lot when I do collage stamping and the little dots. It's just, yeah, I do love it. I'm also going to stamp an extra single rose because we're going to use that to decorate the little gift bag. So while we're stamping and colouring, we might as well do that. So I'm going to just do some watercolouring. So let's relax. I've got a watercolour brush, an aqua, one of the old aqua painters. I don't know why, I always grab my old aqua painters. These are the new water brushes. Let's go with a new, new style one. I always grab my favourite ones. They're just in a pot in front of me. Let's use my water jar and not my glass of water and let's put some colour on so I'm going to squish the ink into the lid just our regular sort of colouring oh, I might need a piece of kitchen towel I feel a bit happier if I'm watercolouring with a bit of kitchen towel in my hand Funny. It just doesn't, I don't know what it is about these new brushes. I think I'm just so used to the old ones. So I'm just going to go on. Just putting that colour down in a single, in a straightforward layer. I'm not putting any shading on to start with. Quite watery. Ooh, big blob of water there. I don't faff with my watercolouring for flowers and simple images like this. There are other images like, for example, the um, the celebration stamp with the front door and the bicycle that I would take a bit more time watercolouring. And I just haven't had the opportunity to demonstrate that yet, so I'm going to have to get on with it before the end of celebration because it's a really pretty stamp set. Now I'm going in with some more concentrated ink and I'm hoping this comes across on camera. I think sometimes when you're demonstrating you're not, I'm seeing things close up and you're not seeing it in quite so much detail but I will lift it up so you can see once I've finished. And let's just, and I'm just sort of 
putting a bit of shade around the edges of the petals, nothing more complicated than that. I've left the centres because I'm going to pop a little bit of yellow in the centre. And I can't believe this rain today, thinking about roses, because I've, I've got the most beautiful yellow rose. It's kind of like an apricot yellow, if that makes any sense. Um, just out the back on the patio and it's been in bud for over a week and it's just flowered this week and it's so gorgeous and it'll have dropped every single petal by tomorrow morning now shall i do my perfume in this yes in this fresh freesia let's do it let's do it i'm sure we get pur purple perfume this one reminds me of is it coco mademoiselle I don't know what this one reminds me of. And again, I'm not doing anything really tricky. I'm just simply adding some colour. Okay. Clean my brush. Wipe out the wet ink. I can leave that bit because it's concentrated. Close my pad. Oh, I'm happy when I'm watercolouring. This is so saffron. Just gonna pop a little bit of yellow so saffron right in the center of those roses really quickly and then we'll color in some of that perfume bottle we might actually I'm just thinking we might pop a little bit of gray on there as well we'll see Do, yeah, let's do a yellow label so it looks like it's maybe got a gold top, this one. I'm putting a bit more concentrated down one side just so it looks a bit shaded. And we'll do a yellow label. And then let's see. Got some basic grey here. to really get it quite watery and we'll just oh a bit too dark let's go a bit paler than that there yeah, that's better and i'm going to purposefully kind of leave bits so it looks like a reflection a bit darker down this side because we said we had a bit of shadow just tickled it and then we'll just pop let's just have a think just like that and then we'll just pop some green on those leaves of the roses really quickly go back in with a bit more concentrated but only a little bit I am not an artist unlike mummy who's doing a fab painting at the moment of a an otter beautiful oh she's so talented my mummy Shout out for talented mum. Mm -hmm. When it's finished, she must show us it on the Crafty Beehive group. So it's fab. So we've got our decorated uh, pieces to decorate the card. So we're going to go ahead and die cut. Oh, throwing my brush. Die cut those. So if I move that out of the way, why not bring a mini machine and mini plates? And we'll just open the mini machine up and I'm going to show you the all dressed up 
dies that coordinate with the stamp set. So you get the coordinating pieces for the flowers, you get the coordinating piece for the uh, scent bottle. You also get this big die that cuts the pieces for the gift bag and a little placket that can make a label, this one that can make a label, this long one that makes the strap, these that make some cute buckles which I'll show you on the bag and these that make the most adorable buttons and they're really useful for, if, for us crafters who miss buttons um, for putting on cards so we can actually cut little paper buttons and stick them on and they're nice because they're flat and they go through the post without it being a large letter so that's a really cute um, die to have so let's have a look and see what we can do here I'm going to try and just pop that on an angle now the difficulty I'm going to have with this mini machine is that the plates want to spin about a little bit I just turned my base plate over then because it was concave and I've just turned it so it's a little bit flatter so it doesn't spin about. And that's what I was doing there. Now which one's this? Is that that one? That's that one. And that's that one. Let's put that top plate on and we're going to stagger our plates a bit and gently down and keep them nice and nipped together as we start to wind in because what it can do sometimes is just skip and jump especially if you've got little dies in keeping everything steady steady as you go there we go and i just need to run that through once more oh no i've got to turn off notifications who's flipping messaging me now So annoying. Um, right, just bear with. I'm going to see if I can actually turn off notifications as we do not disturb. There we go. Just a little small interlude. That just means we won't get disturbed again. I do apologise for that message. And it was actually really sweet. I should say that that's something else that made me incredibly happy today. I had a text from a friend whose little girl had a birthday last week and I sent her the pop-up penguin birthday card for her birthday. And she was absolutely over the moon. And so a friend texted today to say Emma absolutely loved her birthday card. And she said... Um, I, I loved the card that Izzy sent me. I love all of Izzy's cards and I keep every one of them. Um, but I really, really loved this one. And it just made me so happy. How cute is that? She's adorable. I might have to see if I can um, share the picture of her with the card. So I'm just going to pop this, this flower to one side. And I'll pop that on my magnet magnetic sheet as well just um so that I don't lose it because you know what it's like and pop that out of the die that's good so we've now got all of our bits and pieces and we can start to have a look at assembling this card and this is where we keep our fingers oh no we've got some more stamping I've got some more stamping to do and I want to show you how to make sure that we, um, just some tips, we stamp our bits and pieces in the right place. So you might be able to see, if I stand up again, that when you run this die, oh, let me see if I can get the light. It might show up on the plain white one better. And now, you can actually see, it slightly gives you an, um, a slight embossed mark where the die actually runs through kind of looks a bit like a peace sign and that's a really good and useful um, gauge but I found the other useful gauge the other useful thing to do was to actually line up the wheel with the card now we have this hole here I just pop that out with my paper piercer let's just pop that through doesn't always die cut it when you line the dies up as I did. So just bear with me. Why is my, my board rubber? 
I'll just pop that on there. That's it. So if I line up the piece, the piece I want to stamp on is the shimmery white. So I'm going to line it up, making sure that's lined up with the hole all the way through. And I'm going to just take a pencil and I'm going to make a very light pencil mark on each of those segments. I'm going to just take a seat because it's much, much easier if I do this when I'm seated. Let me just get rid of that little hole. That's better. I can see they're lined up properly. That's better. And you want to line up that V segment with your hole. And then just a very light pencil mark around each of those. And then when it makes it so much easier when you come to do your stamping. And we just rub those out when we're finished. So now we can see each of those holes where the aperture's going to be. And we can just go ahead and do our stamping. And I forgot that obviously I need to colour in watercolour in my flowers when I've stamped them on here as well. So I'm going to use Stays On Again and I'm going to stamp Hello Fabulous as my sentiment in the hole. And so these dies are not made specifically to coordinate with any particular stamp set. And so what I found was really helpful was actually having um, a set of each of the different apertures and then I can actually use my use those with my stamp set. So for example, um, you can go to your stamp set, just double check, that is actually printed at 100% size and it usually says on the front and you can see which images then fit in the aperture so you can see that the chocolates fit in the heart, the cup fits in the heart, the cookie doesn't, oh it just fits, but it will fit better probably in the circle, which one's best. And I cut another one somewhere with the wedge and one with, um, that I showed you earlier with the um, oblong, this one here that I showed you with the rectangle. And the rectangle one is fantastic for sentiments. So you can have uh, an image here and you can have all of your sentiments coming through. So today's plan, consume, you can have cocktails, chocolate, um, cookies, and you could have the images here. So that would work really well with that with that um, rectangle. I don't want to put that one away, I want to use that one. So that's what I found really handy to have, was one of each of the apertures cut, so you could check which stamp set you were going to actually use. And then, you know, the sky's the limit. You just go through your stamp sets and pick the one that you want to use. And if you use a card layout similar to this as almost a formula, you can't go wrong. You needn't change up the actual layout. I mean, you can do. There's lots of different layouts that you can pick, um, but you needn't. So I'm sorry, I'm going to go back in and do some more painting, even though I've put my inks to one side. I'm sure you won't mind. It's only a couple of flowers. Had anybody actually seen the um, dies in the catalogue? Spotted them? I think they're one of those kind of blinking you miss it sets. Has anybody seen any of the demonstrators online making cards? I think the, I mean, I do think the dies are fantastic for kids cards, but I hope that with this demonstration this evening, I'm going to prove that they're also fantastic for adult, grown up cards, feminine and masculine. Because I think the star one be great for a man. I've got one in mind as well using the Campology stamp set, the one with the tent and the binoculars. If 
we spotted that one. Got an idea for a card for that using these dies. Possibly just rush that a little bit, but we'll just just for the sake of cracking on. And I believe that I also just stamped um, a few of the little spots in basic grey behind. So the little spots that come in the stamp set. But what I want to do is just stamp off. So I will just use maybe the a bit of this. So I'll just stamp off because that's quite a strong. And let's just try and. It just sort of takes away some of that stark white in the background there. There we go. I think that's sufficient. Just pop that to one side and I'm just going to um, rub out that pencil marking. Just close my ink. It's very dangerous leaving ink open. Annoying bracelet. So we've now got our decorated wheel. Oh, and I did promise I would just show you some of that colouring in a bit closer. So just so you can see that I did put a little bit of light and shade and how I've painted my perfume bottle as well. Oh no, okay, so Carol hadn't spotted them either. Yeah, so they are. I do look closely at the dyes section of the catalogue because like I say, there's that background one as well. I know we, we, we know about layering circles and the diorama one's a new one, but um, certainly this as a standalone set of dies is, is really quite unique and interesting. Now I'm just going to layer up. So I've got a basic white and it's not basic white thick, it's just basic white, but I am going to layer these up because I just find that it's a bit more substantial, so just add a bit of Tombow and let's just layer them up. You could use thick basic white, you could use actually a scrap of coloured because you're not going to see it once it's layered up. And you just need to make sure you get your scallops lined up, you know, from around the edge. Scallops, scallops. Potato, potato. <laughs> or I was in our house, we say, you say flamingo, I say my flingo. <laughs> and that's just quite a cute little family thing that we say. Because our Susan always says my flingo. <laughs> She's cute. So I'm going to just start and do some assembly now. We've got all of our components. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this piece of gorgeous gold um, speciality paper to the bottom layer. Now what I am going to do, because it's quite sort of shiny and vinyl-y, is I am going to use uh, stamp and seal for this. And I'm being really hesitant because when I'm demonstrating live, I like to have the wriggle, wiggle room even of liquid glue because I'm not actually sitting directly over my cardstock and the minute you stick this down and stamp and seal you just don't have any wiggle room so I'm being ever so careful 
and hesitant. I really want to get this straight. I think I've done it because on my original I actually didn't get it straight and I ended up trimming some at the side. Now I've pointed that out, you'll possibly see it, but hey. I've left a little bit of a gap at the bottom just for contrast and I'm going to stick this layer down. Now, now is the time if you wanted to use the other die that pierces the arrow rather than the stick on arrow now is the time to use the pierced arrow so what you would do is you would feed all of this layer you'd line it up you'd use some low tack tape like washi tape to stick it down you'd pop this die in that little lug and you'd run it all the way through your die cutting machine and that would give you a pierced arrow pointing down I want to stick an arrow on top rather than use the pierced one. So I'm going to um, stick this layer straight down onto my card base and I'm going to use Tombow for this. Hmm. Now I'm going to just keep my eye on proceedings because I've just heard he must be obeyed going to the living room he's going to switch on the tally and he might be using some of my bandwidth so I'm just going to just right at the critical moment when I need to assemble all of these tricky pieces that are really actually quite easy to stick together to be honest so we assemble the wheel inside it's now feeling nice and substantial and we're going to use a brad now silly me forgot to order the new brads and I rummaged around and found that I had some old brads lying around in a drawer so I'm just going to pick one of those it doesn't matter which one because it's actually going to be covered up it could actually be I've got this old one, this old one here that's actually quite flat I might use that it's one that looked a bit like a button so I'm going to put that through I've seen other demonstrators um, using an extra piece of card in a circle behind but I find that it spins quite freely it's absolutely fine let me just stand up make sure I don't lose my bandwidth I'll try and demonstrate this while I'm standing so you just put the brad all the way through and open the brad at the back you can keep it quite loose and as my upline would say spread the legs spread the legs <laughs> Sorry, that's just rude but funny. So we pop that through and you can now see that your wheel is working. I get those cute images. So now we know it's working, we can now um, stick this piece to the base and then we can finish decorating when it's all stuck together. Or we can decorate and stick the whole thing down. But I'm going to choose to just stick it down. It's dead simple. We're going to use dimensionals and we can use... Um, big dimensionals, now I've got some of those black ones here, little ones, but I think what could be handy actually, because that's a dark colour, I think I might go with the black dimensionals. And what I'm going to use is some of the edge pieces, because on the little mini ones you get quite a nice broad edge. And we've got quite a big space here that we want to lift up, so I'm going to chop that like that and I'm going to try and peel off that whole bottom piece there Ooh, look at that I'm going to use that right the way along the bottom of that if I just move that you can see what I'm working on I'm just going to pop that there and I might just nick a corner here on there we want to make sure that we don't have any dimensionals interfering with this wheel going anywhere near so we've got a good corner there it's a really good way of using up those chunky border edges that we've got available because often I find I get a whole selection of these I've used all the dimensionals and I just end up with the edges left over so we can use some of these 
ya. Let's have a look. What sort of size have we got there? Let's just chop that down a bit. we could use the dimensional strip we've got that as well in the annual catalogue but if you've got these sheets of dimensionals let's use them and we can pop some in there as well gosh listen to that rain outside it's grim up north Who's noticed that I've painted my nails blackberry bliss? <laughs> oh, I'll just fill in. I mean, of course, you could just put one in each corner, but I think that that's going to give it a really good lift. And I'm going to just stick that whole layer down and then we'll decorate. Oh, I need to tie, let's tie my ribbon round. Let's do that before, oh no. Did I tie the ribbon? Yes, I did tie the ribbon around that bit, didn't I? I'm sure I did. Yes, I did. Where is my ribbon? It's here. So I've gone with fresh freezer ribbon for this one, and I've got a guess that my dimensionals might be in the way now, but hey-ho, we'll sort it out. We will sort it out. So I think what I'm going to do is actually just tie my ribbon around very loosely. Not go too mad. I might even just do it in a double knot to start with, just so I can get my layer down and then just build it up. So it doesn't need to be too tight. I need to be down here a bit more. Yes, because it's over the top of these dimensionals, it's not going to interfere with my wheel, so that's absolutely fine. So let's get these. Should have thought about that before I stuck all these dimensionals on it. But hey, we need the dimensionals for both adhesion, but we also need it for dimension to make it stand up. How are we doing for time? We're all right. The gift bag won't take too long to assemble because I've pre-die cut it. And I just really wanted to show you that that's in the dies, the uh, dress to impress dies. If I can just peel that. That will have the ribbon to stay put. Ooh. I'm sticking to it. There we go. And we're good to go. That's grand. And I'm going to hope that that's positioned nicely. Again, I'm hoping that's straight because I'm not right over the top of it. So hold it up it's as straight as it's going to be so we're pretty much there we now just need to decorate so you can see this pretty piece here is going to go over the top of this circle and it will hide that brad there might be a little bit of a bump but it will hide that brad top so we're going to stick that on and i'm going to use um i think i just used tombow pretty sure i just used tombow the only thing with tombow and this gold paper is that it's not porous like cardstock so you do just need to be patient with it going off and we'll just give it a bit of pressure and it will stick glue on my fingers it will stick eventually it will go off eventually it's like anything shiny we could really do with um a dry glue you know um tape glue but because it's so skinny it's a skinny piece isn't that gorgeous though it's so shimmery and lovely i love it now we're going to do some layering up and i thought that these two pieces were too nice to to abandon so I decided I would add another circle so we've got three circles and we could have the sentiment here we could have a circle here and the scent bottle could go on top of the circle now I'm just being pedantic I've got my grain of my 
shimmer going downwards on this piece. I didn't really look at that piece. I'm going to pop that there. I'm going to position my scent bottle up on dimensionals. I kind of want a bit, I don't want it directly under it. I want a bit of an off centre. So I will use a stamp and seal on the back of this. Good grief, everything I touch is sticky. Sticking to things. Not bothered about this ribbon at the minute. I'm going to deal with that in a tick. I'm just going to stick that slightly off centre. And it's just a layer. It's just another layer of interest. It was too pretty to get rid of. And I'm going to stamp my sentiment and heat emboss it. So let's just have a tiny tidy up these bits. And I'll just grab my white embossing powder. Am I still online? I am still online. It's looking good so far. Oh, thank you, Sylvia. Sometimes one needs a man, like a fish needs a bike. Mum, where did that comment come from? <laughs> or oh, is that because Ian must be obeyed when in the in the living room and switched on the telly box? Yeah. Yeah. Or is it just you being a feminist? I'm going to use my embossing buddy. Because I've just remembered to do it and I never remember to do it. it's a dark purple you can see the powder now I've got my sentiment somewhere it's your day is it oh I've got happy birthday there what's that one it's your day there we go and some versamark which I've hidden over here and it's your day and happy birthday I've chosen from days to remember this stamp set that one day I will demonstrate I promise another one that I've got on the shelf and used and not demonstrated on air so I'm just going straight in the middle with it's your day and I'm going to scoop some powder fantastic just get rid of that bit there I'm going to bring my tweezers my heat tool which for once is actually plugged in it's like a magic trick it's a tiny bit messy is my sentiment but it's a handmade card isn't it at the end of the day Let's not get too gripped about this. I'll just pop my tweezers back. Okay, so I've got my sentiment. And it is a little bit messy. I did get a little bit of embossing powder. I think it's my sticky fingers. So we've got a sentiment. That's stuck down nicely. And that's stuck down nicely now. There is a little bump where the um, brad is. But do you know what? It's not the focal point. When it's all put together, this card... You won't notice it. So I'm going to stick my perfume bottle up on dimensionals. Just grab some regular ones. I absolutely love this stamp set. I've used it so much. So pretty and versatile. Funnily, funnily enough, I haven't stamped the... Um, High heeled shoe and lipstick nearly as much as I've stamped the perfume bottle. I just think this perfume bottle is so nice. And I'm going to pop that just so it's kind of overlapping. So all our images are grouping together nicely now. Let's just move this ribbon out of the way. I can actually release that and just move it out of the way for a bit. And we're going to put our sentiment here. Again, up on dimensionals, and then we'll pop those two flowers on. So you can see how it's coming together. We've got a bit of a triangle going on. It's all about this com composition. So I want a dimensional top and bottom. We can even, if we want our ribbon sticking down, we could do. We could put some tape glue underneath, but I'm not too bothered. It'll stay put once I've got it. Once I've got my sentiment just where I want it 
and now I can tie a bow and we can stick our flowers on. So with my bow I always do a cross so I've got north and south and I work with my south and make a loop first. Now I like this ribbon but it can sometimes be a bit tricky to keep flat. There we go. Because I've done north and south, now my um, loops want to be east and west which is nice. It's just how I want my bow to actually lie. And now we're going to faff with it a bit until we get it exactly how we want it. So that loop can afford to overlap because we can still see the sentiment. And we'll pull that nice and tight, puff it up a bit, get the fabric scissors and just trim it down. There we go. And then we'll faff again and just tell it to sit where we want it, which is just there. And we'll just stick our little flowers on. This one's going on with glue and a tiny sentiment, one of those mini ones. Uh, tiny sentiment. Hello. Dimensional. If I could speak, it'd be marvellous. I'm putting a little dimensional on the leaves because they're going to go there. And I'm going to put a blob of Tombow on the bottom. So I can actually peel the backing off. So stick that one about there. And I can slide this one underneath. I wonder if I could pick it up. I'm just going to slide that underneath. And there we go. Card finished. Same but different. Exactly the same, just a different colourway. Oh, we've forgotten the little tiny arrow. Was anyone shouting at me? And I kept it over here. It's teeny tiny. It's fiddly farty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put it there. Don't move. Stay there. I'm going to grab my silicone mat. I'm going to turn it upside down and I'm going to get my fine tip glue pen and I'm going to ever so carefully put a tiny little bit of glue and remember to put that needle back in the tube. This is really fiddly farty now. I'm probably going to try tweezers. And this is when you need to then position it and stick it and leave it to dry. Don't be tempted now to spin the wheel because it will come off. Leave that to dry. Leave it out of the way. Okay, so now we've got two cards done. I love that colour. I love both colours, but I'm really liking this colour combo. I think it's fantastic. Let me just put that die back in the packet that ribbon somewhere and now let's have a look at that gift bag we'll just put the original card oh I will put um happy birthday I will stamp happy birthday inside before I forget and I think I did cut a piece of um shimmery white but I can't remember so I'm just going to really quickly cut that layer for the middle so who can remember the size of the layer for the middle Okay, so if our main um, card is 15, we want to be about 14 and a half in length. And if our card is 10 and a half, we want to be about 10 in width. So that's our layer for the middle. And I always say about, it's about that size, isn't it? It doesn't have to be exact. It's just a bit smaller so it will fit. And I'm going to stamp happy birthday. Not that one this one happy birthday and I'm going to stamp it in basic grey I'm not stamping it in and um, stays on I'm just going to go with basic grey very juicy basic grey and let's see if it's if I can get that straight let me just try and eyeball that because the stamp isn't actually straight on the block I hope you didn't get the top of my head in shot then Uh, 
and actually I could decorate this inside even more by stamping because this is shimmery white I could stamp some more of those flowers and colour them in but I'm not going to just for speed I'm not rushing I know it's episode two of um, Silent Witness but I'm not rushing to watch it I'm going to watch it on catch up tomorrow So I'm going to show you how I made this cute gift bag. Now I want to share with you that there's two kind of sizes you can end up with with this gift bag. So it's the die from the Dress to Impress set. And I've chosen to make it almost like a designer, nice to stiff designer handbag this evening. And the die that comes in the set, where's the die has gone? Here we are, all dressed up. So there is this little die and I faffed about with this die trying to make this closure for the bag and it's just a bit too wide and not quite deep enough. So in the end I used a punch, I actually used this punch here and made this flap and I closed it with Velcro and you can open it and I just for showing you I have put in um, an Avon not selling Avon but that's an Avon nail colour and I've also managed to fit in there these cute little, it's a matchbook, I think that was from a well-known high street pharmacy that's super, <laughs> if I was to say that, and that's got emery boards in so I thought that would be a nice little gift, the colour goes perfectly with this one um, the nail polish doesn't, but that's the newest nail polish that I have in my selection. So it looked nicest. And then I've closed it with that little bit of a Velcro. Just persuade that. And then finished it with a bow. So there's that size if you fold the sides in. If you pop the sides out, it gives you more of a bucket size bag. And this is one that I made in a class last year. I also embossed this one. As you can see, you can actually run the die through an embossing folder. So two different sizes, It's a little. it feels a little bit bigger, you could probably fit a bit more in, you might put a cello bag with some treats in there. So if you wanted a slightly larger um, gift bag, you would go with sides popped out, or if you wanted a bit more formal, sides popped in. I just thought I'd show you that. But let me show you how I am going to assemble it. So all the bits are here, I pre-die cut these bits just so you didn't have to watch me wind in the handle. And again, I used the shimmery gold and I've die cut two pieces for the bag. Two pieces exactly the same for the bag. I've die cut two of the straps and four of the miniature buckles to pop on the straps. I also need to punch, using this punch, a piece for the closure, like so. Now, I want to just share with you something that, um, actually it was mum, thanks mum, mum was asking um, me what size the punches are. Now in the catalogue punches are actually shown 100% but mum was saying that she fancied a punch that was really easy just to punch out to use with sentiment so I said what you need is you want to make yourself one of these or get me to make it and I'll send it to you and I've punched each of the label punches that I've got on my shelf, and I haven't got all of them, I've punched myself a little hole in a piece of card and just put it together with one of those library clip rings. And then that means that I can go to a, let me just grab a stamp set with sentiments in, and I can see, oh, that, that punch there matches that sentiment. That's quite a good size for that one. Whereas maybe this one, is way too big for that sentiment but that one might be really good for that sentiment so I can actually use this template it, I just keep it on my desk and I can use this template just to gauge well it's obviously not going to fit that one because that's too long but that one might fit with that one this postage stamp one's quite cute you get the idea so that's quite a handy thing if you've got a lot of punches and you can never decide which one to grab just punch yourself some scrap card and hold it together with a, a ring or a paper clip or a brad or something and then it's handy to just so I just thought I'd share that with you.
sorry, I've got enough paste. I'll come back. Let's make this bag. So I have um, die cut. I'm just going to burnish all the creases. You can see it die cuts and it actually embosses the um, score lines. And you do just need to be a bit careful when you're squishing them down because we've also got these stitched lines and the tendency is for the cardstock to want to fold along the stitch line. So I'm actually going to burnish that by going backwards and forwards along the actual score line. And remember we're going to pop the sides in and we've got this little V which is again a little bit tricky, you just need to use your fingernails. And we've got all of those flaps, same on the other piece. Now this does work better with cardstock than with designer series paper. I found I've made a couple of these bags using designer series paper and because it's thinner it can sometimes almost cut through the score lines because our dies are so good and so um, precise. Sometimes the score lines actually almost want to cut so just be careful when you're using designer series paper it's perhaps best to use cardstock and decorate with designer series paper in my opinion and experience but it's such a great set of dies it's so useful then it's dead easy to put together we just start with the side seams so we obviously put the bag tops together and then we can just start with the side seam and I'm going to just glue that side seam there In fact, it might be better doing it that way. So making sure you've got your tops to the top. And line it up carefully. And you might want to use a, bo a bone folder. And we do have a bit of spillage. And because we've got that pierced stitched edge as well, be careful when you wipe glue off using a bit of paper towel because if you don't wipe it off quickly your paper towel will stick so if in doubt leave it to dry and use your glue rubber and now we're going to do the other side seam pop that side together you just need to get your fingers inside for this one because it's quite a small side seam but just take your time to get it lined up much glue on there. It's oozing out. Just a really quick wipe. See if you do want to decorate it with designer series paper, if you run it through the die then you'll have a piece that's exactly the same and you can just stick your designer series paper onto the top and that's what I would suggest if you wanted a patterned bag with this die. Now we're just going to glue the bottom in. So there's those tiny, two tiny little flaps and then two bigger flaps. And I'm just going to glue. I'm not going to bother putting any glue on those side flaps. I'm just going to put some glue on this bottom flap. And in fact, I'm going to put it on this one. So I know I don't have any over spill. Turn that that way up and just run my bone folder in the bottom. Now you see I want I can pop that out if I wanted a wider bag I'm going to pop it in like so because I've burnished those creases like this and already it's coming together it's so cute and I'm going to pop my handbag straps on. Again I could choose to put my bag straps um, front to back or um, as I've done with this one, I'll just lay that down so you can see. Now before you try and adhere the straps, just give it a run with a bone folder to just start that curling. Otherwise you'll get a creased bag strap. It'll want to actually 
crease now I've burnished it it will fold nicely and I can glue that on so I'm going to glue those bag straps but before I do I'm going to thread those buckles on so I'm just going to thread one oh I didn't glue them I just threaded them on just slide them up into the middle how cute are they they're just so cute I love them oh, the buttons are even cuter I kind of wish I'd die cut a few of the buttons now I don't think I've got a project with them on so we've got our bag straps now what I think I might do is glue my flap and again I'm just going to give that a rub with the bone folder because it will help it to just fold over and I want to glue that into the back so it will come over the top and I'm going to glue it using um, stuff, this stuff, stamp and seal stuff, <laughs> stuff. Oh, what kind of demonstrator am I? And I'm going to put some of this stuff on the shiny side to stick inside the back. Because I've seen posh designer bags. I haven't got one myself, but I've seen posh designer bags. And that's not gone centrally. But hey. Um, that have this flap inside the bag. I'm sure I've not dreamt it. That it kind of starts inside, it's not outside, and then it comes over the top. I'm sure I've seen them. I've not dreamt it. Like this. So it actually goes inside. And I'm going to just... I remember now, I've forgotten to get out my... Velcro dots, and I'm sure I have one from yesterday that I chopped in half, so I'm just going to get that. So all I did was I put one Velcro dot hook and loop together and then I chopped it in half. So I've got one here that I can actually stick on half of one. I'll just peel the backing off one side. Stick that there peel the backing off the other side and hopefully when I close that that should just go there so now my bag has a closure now the way I did this one I actually put the handles on first and then I found it really fiddly to do that so I'm actually going to put my handles on last and I'm going to stick them to the outside because they've got that pretty stitched bit that stitched edge I think they look really nice and effective and I'm going to slide the buckles down so I'm actually going to just open that for the moment so I can actually put my finger behind and give it some pressure and I'm going to stick that on stick them on with a blob of tombow thinking that that will look nice a blob of tumble on this side. I have no idea if I've still got anybody watching or whether you've all gone off to watch Silent Witness. But I will stand up in a tick and have a look. Yeah, one thing I would say is make sure you get them level. So just take your time, especially for the front. Just give that a pinch and then slide your buckles down. I'm not going to rush to close that until my Tombow's actually dried nicely. And I'm just going to do the same for the back. So let's just have a look. Where am I? That needs to be on that side. Yeah. In fact, why don't I put my Tombow on there? Such a cute bag. How nice is it? Even better if it wasn't all sticking to my thumb. Bring that round. Slide those buckles down. Too cute. And I'm going to try and just fold that flat. You just have to watch those buckles. Yeah, I knew that was going to pop off. I didn't just press that down enough at the back and be patient enough. Let's just do Come on, stick. And that punch is just a little bit wide, but it will go through. 
tab it to. And then we're just going to decorate it with a pretty bow and that extra flower which we've got here. And I stuck mine on with a dimensional because I thought it looked quite nice raised up. So I'm just going to pop that on with a dimensional. I'm going to tie a ribbon bow and call it done. How cute is that? That's so nice. I really do like it. I'm just going to tie a quick bow. Even though I've got tumble all over my fingers. Yeah, there we go. And we'll just grab a glue dot for this one, I think. it off. There we go, let me just stand up and see whether anyone's still there. Yes, Blackberry Bliss and Gold does look gorgeous, you're right Carol, it's so nice. Um, just sets it off. Um, I'm just going to have a really quick tidy up. Just pop everything to one side and I can just bring in these finished projects. So we've got this one here, this one here, same but different. There we go. And I hope you've enjoyed that demonstration and I hope it gives you um, another look at the catalogue. You know, have a look at those dies. And like I say, I will put a post on actually detailing what I'm going to offer. If you like, um, if you wanted to buy all of the dies and stamp set together as a bundle or as a group, because that bundle offer for the dre uh, best dressed, how, what to call it, yes, dressed to impress stamp set and dies is no longer available as a bundle. I'm going to offer a special offer and I'm going to actually top that up to £90 so you can choose um, an extra celebration and I'm actually going to offer you a pack of designer series paper of your choice for free from me. Um, because I just think that they go superbly well together. Okay, to have the, oh yes, to have the card and the matching bag would be so good. Yeah, definitely, Sylvia. So if you are tempted, the two die sets and the stamp set together total eighty six pounds. So if you do fancy making that purchase, I know it's a considered purchase and it's quite a big purchase all at once. I will offer those extra freebies just to sweeten the deal. I'm just going to swing my camera back around. I know I've only got three people watching currently live at the moment. But if you're watching me on catch up, let me take a seat. As I know, quite a few of you do watch me on catch up either later on in the week or on YouTube once I've published to YouTube. I will just say thanks again for watching. So whether you've watched live or on catch up, thanks ever so much. And I will be posting, so watch my Facebook feed because I will do a post detailing that special offer that I've just outlined. Because it is, I am able to do that. I'm able to actually gift um, some freebies to my customers. And I do think that in particular, I love using those um, take, um, Take a, give it a whirl, not take a whirl. Let's take a whirl. I could do that right now. Let's take a whirl. And I haven't even had a gin and tonic. But there you go. Um, give it a whirl. I do love those give it a whirl dies. And I think they are tucked away and hidden in the catalogue. And they're so fab. They will serve you for years to come, I'm sure, for kids' cards, for any cards. So if you do love them, just as, and, and these this stamp set with the bag and the perfume and everything just goes so well. So, like I say, I will detail them. I'm rabbiting on. We all want to finish. It's just past nine. I've not done too badly, actually. And I hope that you um, now are convinced that it is a really simple die set to use as well to get an interactive uh, card. Not tricky. Really dead easy. So thank you once again for watching. Lots of love from me. Just stay safe and keep crafting. 
and I will not see you next week live because I'm just going to take a break for a week but I will be posting, I'm just taking a creative break and I will be posting lots of ideas and projects as I make them. Okay and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.